guys, Joe Pizinski here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. And I want to start this video with a shout out to a local Texas business I ran into the other night. And it's the crew from Real Good Vodka right here in Texas. And I like to give local Texas businesses a shout out. So this is a non-compensated endorsement. But if you're a vodka drinker, check these guys out. You won't be disappointed. Alright, that being said, this video is about safety. And the first video I ever posted, just about three years ago, 6-9-2016 was a video about inverted threading away from the chuck. I did that video because I was a little bit annoyed at some of the bad practices or advice that I had seen posted in other YouTube videos. Now this video is specifically about freehand drilling. I just Every time I see somebody grab a piece of material, pinch it down to a table and drill a hole through it, my skin crawls. So figured it was a good time to, to explain the phenomenon that we've all encountered, the why behind it, and then just give you a couple of thoughts on how maybe not to lose fingertips because it can happen pretty quick. So just for sake of this demonstration, I hope you can see this. Let's say we're doing this particular operation at 600 RPM. Almost forgot how to spell RPM, imagine. All right, 600 RPM. How many times is that per second? 60 seconds in a minute, that's 10 times per second. Now that's pretty quick. I mean, if you think that you're going to be able to pull away from anything that's going to hurt you with the reaction time quicker than 10x per second, you've got another thing coming. Now I think we've all encountered when we're drilling, when the drill finally punctures through the backside of your material, it's smooth, it's smooth, it's smooth, whoop, then you get that little bit of accelerated at the end. Well, that's because there's no material there, right? Well, that's only half the reason that that happens. There is another very physical reason that that happens, and that instant pull down like that is, is the moment that material will lift off the table, it'll clap, it'll want to spin, it'll grab for a second, and it'll erupt out the back of the hole. If you're cutting like a plastic or something, that's when the back side of the hole just goes boom and terrible. So let me show you why that happens. Then I'll show you a couple ways to protect your fingertips from having that happen. Now this top section right here is the side view as the drill is coming down through your material. This is ultimately the hole we're going to cut. And this view right here, I'm trying to draw that big so you can see what's going on here. This is looking straight down the spindle, okay? So here's your hole. Not bad. As the drill is coming down through the material, let's say we are broken through in the center but not broken through out on the edges. This is what you have. Your drill has made it through and at this point you have a conical shape forming in the plate that you're drilling. This is a given. As this drill progresses through, as it gets deeper through the part, now this is all happening really quick guys because it's happening 10 revolutions per second or 600 RPM. As it gets through down to the bottom, the outside edge gets very thin. I think we can agree on that. Now let's just pause for one second and take a look at the cross section of any given twist drill. You have the part, the area that you hit on the sander or the grinder when you sharpen that drill and that's the primary relief from the cutting edge and then the helix that the chips evacuate from the hole in, the flute is considerably more aggressive. Okay, That's like a sliding board compared to a coil spring. One is really steep and one isn't. So from the side of the drill you have the flute area that goes up and then you have the ground relief on the drill. This is the cutting edge right here. Now if you were to take that drill and cut that drill in half at any given point on that drill, that's the shape you're going to see. It's going to be a bow tie shape, give or take. Some have a little bit thinner web in the center than others, but ultimately it's going to be a bow tie shape. Alright, back to the hole. As it's coming down, 
rapidly, rapidly, rapidly. At a nanosecond, a fraction of a second, that drill is going to break through the final part of that plate. Back. Flutes are going to break through, and then they're going to start to bulldoze the material off. Well, as that happens, as it comes around, and this is happening pretty quick, look at what you have. You've got a keyhole for your key. The drill makes a transition from cutting on this side and resting on this surface to hooking underneath of this lip and riding up this flute. That's why the drill goes it doesn't actually fall into the hole, it's actually pulled into the hole. So if you have a piece of material that you are holding down, when that transition occurs, that material is going to want to do two things. It's going to want to ride up the helix of that drill, or it's going to want to grab. And when it does grab, hopefully, this web that's left here, the material that's left remaining in front of where it did grab, is thin enough so that it just shears away and doesn't turn into an inverted mini lawnmower blade or a blender blade because you can kiss your fingers goodbye. If you think you're going to pull back from this piece of material grabbing at 10 revolutions per second, well, you're probably John Force because he's probably the only guy on the planet with the reaction time quick enough to pull his hands away. Most of us would pull our hands away, but there would be pieces missing. So this is really not a good idea. Please do not hold anything down on a table, on a drill press, or a mill, unsupported or unclamped freehand and pass a drill through it. It's not a good idea. It's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's a matter of when it's going to happen, because it is going to happen. That's why, okay, bow tie cross section on the drill. As it breaks through, you can see the material starts to erase 180 degrees apart. You have all this remnant material left over. The drill dives in, up the relief flute, Part lifts, makes that clapping sound for a second, if you're holding it by hand. It jumps up, hopefully slaps back down to the table. You get a little bit of a heart rushing, well, okay, it's done. You still need to be careful getting it back out. So, anyway, I'm going to show you a couple of little things I got rigged up on my machines to keep that from happening. If you have to do it freehand, there are some absolute basics that you should at least try to adhere to. And uh, I'm going to show you what they are. Let's take a look. This is probably the easiest and the fastest way to stop rotation on any part that you're going to freehand drill on a table. Just put an anti-rotation plug, which is simply a T-nut with a piece of all thread. I have an aluminum collar and a nut. If you're going to be drilling the piece, and this is one of many. This is certainly not the safest, but this is a step in the right direction as far as safety is concerned. You want the material, when you drill it, naturally your drill is going to go down in the hole or between the ways on your machine as it wants to turn, as it wants to spin when the drill grabs. Make sure it's going to bump up against something. Don't make the mistake of keeping your fingers anywhere in that vicinity as you're drilling because as it spins, it's going to bite you. It's going to pinch and it's going to bite a piece out of you. So that is one option. Keep something in the way to prevent rotation. And that's probably the most common option. The second thing you want to do is hold this in a vise. Put your part in a machine vise and clamp the machine vise to the table. Just because the part is in a vise, don't think that the machine is not going to grab and spin the entire vise. I've seen it happen. Believe it or not, I saw a one inch drill passing through a piece of quarter inch plate in a vise, grab the vise, and spin to the point of eccentricity that the drill press actually fell over. And that was uh, quite, the, quite the racket when that hit. The other thing that we all do, I have to believe that we all do it because I've done it, is open up the vise jaws and you sit your piece on top of the vise and you drill down so it passes through. Okay, that's really not a good idea either because as this starts to spin, when it grabs, the one in a thousand times that it will grab, but your hands are still going to be there, this turns into a pair of scissors against this jaw and against the back jaw on the opposite side. So a real quick and easy way to take care of that is with a pair of these little guys. The boots. They are so simple to make. Cut them out on a bandsaw and set them up.
accordingly. Let me reposition the camera so you can get a good feel for how this is set up. And off we go. Alright, let's say you have a bunch of these that you want to freehand drill. And you're going to do it on the top of your machine. Now if you had one of these in here and you just held it down and closed the vise on it, you're halfway there. Let's open it up a little bit more. Rotation is still stopped, but it can still try to climb the drill. So if you use two, there you go. As the material spins, it engages under this one, and under this one, it's spinning clockwise. So these are positioned in the direction of the force. It is not going to rotate, it is not going to lift, and it's easy in, easy out. It takes two minutes to make these. Do yourself a favor, make a pair, stick them in your vise, stick them in your box. Stupid simple, guys. And if you have a specific size drill that you know you're going to pass down through there, we'll make sure that whatever this thickness is is bigger than your drill or stick spacers in there to accommodate it. But if you can support this piece at 180 degrees of pose like this one, it comes in and out nice and quick, super safe. I've seen guys drilling handles on knives freehand and a dull piece of material like this is bad enough when it's already shaped like a knife and it's got an edge on it and they're still punching holes in it without any kind of support. It just absolutely makes my skin crawl. Please keep this in mind. I hope that it helped. If you are using a vise on a drill press, don't think that just because the vise is there that it's not going to spin. The vise can still lift if it's an aggressive drill. Take the time to put a C-clamp on it and hold it down. This is a very good idea and it takes five seconds to hook up. There you go. A couple of L's button in the table, ten fingers on your hands. Life is good. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, well thank you for hanging in there and watching that. I think it is really important to just not make assumptions that uh, I'm just going to jump in this machine for two minutes and knock this out real quick. That's how accidents happen and they happen on the simple machines in the shop. They happen on the pedestal grinders, the belt sanders, drill press is probably number one for stupid accidents. and. It only takes a second to prevent those accidents, so please keep this in mind what I just showed you, and it only takes a second to make the things that I showed you as well. So if you got the time, even if you don't have the time, make the time because you only got 10 fingers and you want to keep them. Thanks for watching. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas.